Tonight on Life on the Rock, Father John Paul will speak with Valeria Tasik, an Ave Maria University lacrosse player, will take a viewer question on organized religion and watch a cool to be Catholic video called Persevere in Faith and much more. Hi, welcome to Life on the Rock. I'm Father Mark Mary, joined by Father John Paul Mary. And tonight we have a great show for you. We have Valeria Tasik. She is a student at Ave Maria University down in Florida. She plays lacrosse and she was born without a left arm. She has a great story of faith and perseverance and just a strong motivation in life. It was so exciting to, to meet her today. Yeah, she has so much zeal and zest for life. Um, you know, obviously her prayer life motivates everything that she, do, that she does. She worked in Washington. She was an intern uh, in political life for a U.S. senator. She gave tours at the Capitol. So we'll, we'll get to hear a little bit about her, about her story. And later in the show, we're going to take a question from one of our viewers. And now we're going to go to our Cool to be Catholic short film of the week, Persevere in Faith by Nicholas Clemens. It's hard to wake up every morning and choose faith. And it's work to push past people saying that I'm wrong. But I still believe. And I will continue to believe. And I will fight my doubt. Because my faith is from God. I am His. I am Catholic. It's so good to have you here in EWTN, Life on the Rock. Thank you for having me, Father. Tell us a little bit about your family background first and mm -hmm. how your parents influenced you, raised you, and, and supported you. And Yeah, so I was raised in Avon, Ohio. Okay. Uh, loving parents. Um, they've never uh, discouraged anything. They always raised me with a go-to attitude. I uh, started with tap dancing, horseback riding, and sports. Uh, favorite okay. memories would probably be um, playing catch with my father um, in the lawn. Um, and yeah, took me to Ave Maria playing um, lacrosse now. So you were always, you always had a competitive spirit about you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, they definitely pushed me to be my best and always loved me. And they also told me it's okay to have, um, you know, the losses and it's okay to lose, but as long as you love the game, you know. And that's so important when you deal with sports, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just knowing how to lose, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. and knowing how to win well. Exactly. No one likes a sore loser. No one like, yeah, no one, well, no one likes to lose. Yeah, right. You know, That's we, we want to win. We want to strive. Mm -hmm. So tell, tell us what, what is that drive to, to play sports and, and how, how, do we, um, how do we live virtue in playing sports? Mm -hmm. I think definitely for my case, I think God blessed me with um, many gifts despite having one arm. Yeah. And I think um, throughout the years, just being motivated and the support um, waking up at 6 a.m. for lacrosse practice. I think that could be a virtue. <laughs> oh, exactly. But um, just waking up to my team um, and knowing that um, I support them. We give 110%. Our coach is great, motivates us um, to stay positive. And um, I never leave a practice saying, man, I could have spent my time doing something else. Um, it's always fun playing for. What did you do in high school, the sports in high school before Ave? Mm -hmm. you just kind of build me up to Ave here. Exactly. So I ran track. <laughs> Okay. Uh, my dad coached me all the way through grade school. Uh, I played basketball as well. I was okay. offered a basketball and lacrosse scholarship. Okay. And yeah, I began lacrosse, playing lacrosse, uh, I want to say my junior year of high school in Maryland. Okay. For what team? I'm sorry? For what team? St. Mary's Annapolis. Okay. And Saint then Mary I went to high school in Ohio at Magnificat. Okay. So you ended up at Ave Maria. Mm -hmm. you know, tell us about how you ended up there. You know, and was, it, was, it, was it more of a sports thing or was it a faith thing or both for you? I would definitely say both. Yeah. Um, I absolutely fell in love with the campus yeah. um, when I was there. I, 
uh, spent the night with one of the lacrosse players and she took me around campus. Uh, it was senior week, so it was very, um, everyone was around, great atmosphere. And I think I fell in love with the beauty of 24 Adoration, Daily Mass, and just um, the amazing people. When you're on the field, um, what is it like, you know, to, to be competitive? Uh -huh. You know, is it, I know I, I watch a lot of men's sports, but I haven't mm -hmm. watched a lot of women's sports. Mm -hmm. What is it like, the difference between men's sports and women's sports, you know? Although we don't get into many <laughs> fist fights. No? Um, <laughs> it's, it's very competitive okay. and the drive to play um, and to win. And I think at Ave, um, all the girls are there to win and all the girls are there to have a great time. And I think together um, we support each other, we forgive, and we ask for forgiveness on our plays um, that we make mistakes on. And I think it's a great environment to grow as an athlete and then grow as a family. What does your uh, a day look like as far as um, training? And mm -hmm. do you wake up early to train with your teammates or do you, you do that by yourself? Uh, we train every day um, except for Sunday. Um, okay. We wake up, be on the field by 6.15, 6.30. Um, and then we do our lovely sprints, yeah. um, which we do together as a team. Um, and then we just have a good practice, about a good two hours, and then go to classes. And then, you know, the team, we eat together, eat meals together. So we're, we're never away from each other. Now, teamwork is very important. You know, mm -hmm. talk about teamwork on the field. Absolutely. You know, just, just being present there to your team. And not, it's not, we're not lone stars mm -hmm. out there on the field. You know, even in the field of life. Absolutely. You know, we're... We're in this together. When we're in this uh, battle together, we pray together, we mm -hmm. eat together as a family. And it's the same thing when on the field too, isn't it? That you're, you're, um, you're striving toward that goal together. Absolutely. Um, as a defender in lacrosse, communication is key. It's so important. If one person's not communicating, okay. um, the whole defense set um, goes down. And so it's very important to uh, you know, hold each other accountable, also forgive, like I said, and ask for forgiveness because we're not perfect, we make mistakes, and it's always, you know, we'll get it the next time, we'll, we, I have your back next time, don't worry, yeah. um, and it's going forward. Now you talked about communication, obviously on the mm -hmm. field and off the field. You know, um, talk about your prayer life a little bit. Absolutely. You know, uh, how does your prayer life influence your, your sports? Mm -hmm. you know? Just as communication is important on the lacrosse field, it's important in my prayer life. Communicating with Christ, um, I find that it's important to find peace um, with Jesus in the tabernacle and adoration. Um, and then being able to be the mantras um, in campus life and going out in the world. Um, but finding the peace is very important, I find. I like that uh, the image of monstrance. Uh, it comes from the word monstrare, which means to show off. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so what is it, who is it that we're showing off, you yeah. know? Yeah. Obviously the Lord. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and, and um, you know, we want to be filled, you know. Absolutely. Maybe talk about that. How, how do you pray? What is it like to pray mm -hmm. as, a young, as a young woman, you know, mm -hmm. in college? You know, what would you say to, to young teenagers in college and in 20s about how to pray? I would definitely recommend contemplative prayer. Um, sitting in silence, it's so important. Um, you learn a lot about yourself. And you ask the Lord to come to you um, and just touch your heart and be able to um, uh, change uh, your life. He works in mysterious ways. And then going outside, you know, your cup overflows. And you become very joyful um, knowing that the Lord loves you and you want to give that love to others. So we can't give what we don't have or possess. Exactly. You know, the old phrase, no, nemo dot quo non habit in Latin. Mm -hmm. you, you probably learned that in class. Yeah. You, we cannot give what we don't possess. Exactly. And that's so important. Uh, I think on our next segment, we'll talk about um, social media and uh, <laughs> both the pros and the cons and, and your involvement too in, in that and how mm -hmm. you know, that has influenced your life. More with Valeria Tasik after the break. Now back to our interview with Valeria Tasik. Valeria Tasik, it's great to have you here. We talked about the first segment, we talked about your family life first, we talked about uh, their role in your sports um, and your you know, competitive nature. We talked a little bit about your prayer life. Now uh, we want to talk about some fun stuff, you know, <laughs> you know just stuff that normal, everyday um, young people can um, relate to. Um, not that they can't relate to sports, but <laughs> you know, social media. Everybody is involved with social media. Mm -hmm. How has that influenced your life? And are there positives and negatives? 
Absolutely. You know, to social media. I think that's very important to cover. Mm -hmm. I think we've become more connected. <clears throat> um, you move from one state to another. You're still connected with friends from your neighborhood. Um, I think it's very important to stay connected. Um, I also see it as a problem too mm. with, you know, the ability to like a post or share. Um, you know, some people find that validation mm -hmm. through, you know, X amount of likes. Um, and I think that could be um, a little bit of social media's downfall. We've definitely, um, as millennials, become attached to yeah. these phones and social media. Um, I think they're great because you stay connected and you get yes. to see what your friends are up to. But at the same time... Um, can it make us lonely? Absolutely. You think? Um, yeah. Because we can think, like you say, we can think we're so connected. Mm -hmm. We can think that we're connected to people. We can see how many friends we may have. But we can be all, all right on the outside, but on the inside, can we be lonely? Absolutely. Through, so, through social media? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think it definitely... Um, gets rid of the traditional in-person conversations. I think it's easier to hide behind a screen and um, talk because we find ourselves yeah. um, less comfortable to speak and have that interaction with someone. Um, and I feel that we do find ourselves to be more lonely to hide behind a screen. So it's important to put aside our phones, you know, oh, yeah. and pray, like you Absolutely. said before. Absolutely, yeah. You know, we put aside our phones and really enter into this deep conversation with Christ. Mm -hmm. you know, how do you, I mean, in, in talking about prayer again, I know we already talked about yeah. that, but, but we can never talk about it enough. You know, <laughs> when, you talk, when you talk to Christ, I mean, do you pray the rosary or do you pray um, the mass? Do you like on the mass throughout the week? Absolutely. You know, do you do I definitely confession? ask. Yes, confession is a beautiful uh, sacrament. I definitely ask for the graces um, for whatever God throws at me that day. Um, may my words be what you know need to say to whomever it may be yeah. um, and definitely I think we're called to be missionaries yeah. um, and, and we're not perfect and that's and, and that's why um, we have the sacraments mm -hmm. you know we, when we mess up like we mess up on the field we have to ask forgiveness exactly right, from our from our uh, mm -hmm. teammates but when we mess up in life we need to ask forgiveness from other people from, and God's mm -hmm. forgiveness we need to seek yeah. that forgiveness from Almighty God absolutely collaboration is very much important. It's great to have that competition, but in life, um, collaborating and just being supportive of each other. Talk a little bit about your, um, your life too in, up in Washington. You know, your autism awareness and you're working at the Capitol. What is that like? I mean, to give tours at the Capitol, mm -hmm. what is that like? Uh, it was an honor. I'm very humbled to say that I've worked in our nation's um, Capitol. Um, it's been an honor and hopefully one day work in the political field but it's, it's, it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. Autism Speaks was an amazing um, nonprofit organization, um, and I'm very pro-life, so uh, yeah. it's very dear to my heart to work with them. Yeah, and your experience with the Missionaries of Charity probably mm -hmm. formed that, and also Absolutely. the Sisters of Life. Um, mm -hmm. their, their joy and their dedication to serving the poorest of the poor mm -hmm. and also those who, um, women who have been hurt by abortion. Um, you know, how has that uh, formed you? definitely opened my eyes to see how beautiful Christ is and how he seeks that friendship with us. Um, such a friendship that he calls, you know, these, these women to have them for life and to serve, you know, his sons and daughters. And I find it to be beautiful that they uh, derive themselves in contemplative prayer, mm -hmm. um, daily mass and the sacraments. And I think their prayer life overflows into the way they share um, and take care of the people around them. Yeah. Um, you know, Mother Teresa, underneath the cross in her convents, you know, she, maybe you can share a little bit about that. What does she have? Absolutely. I thirst. Beautiful statement. Um, it's definitely about um, saturating um, Christ's thirst for, each, for um, each other. For souls. For souls, correct. You know, if you were to, you know, just tell young people, if there was something that you had wanted to share uh, with young people, um, what would it be? You know, I'm a big fan of C.S. Lewis. Um, one of his, one of the quotes that sticks out to me right now is, try to exclude um, suffering and you might exclude the possibility of life itself. Wow. C.S. Lewis is so incredible, you mm -hmm. know, where he speaks about suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, is there any suffering in your own life that you would like to share, Absolutely. you know, with, with our viewers that, that mm -hmm. you've overcome with God's help? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we all suffer. We all have a cross to bear. Yes. And I yes. think um, the people that we have in our lives were put in our place to, you know, help us lift those crosses from our shoulders. I think every day um, yeah. we have sufferings, um, poor grades, 
or you know may not make a sprint at a certain time you want um, but the support is always there and God bless us and we can't do it alone absolutely you know we have other people to help us on the field you know of the cross field mm -hmm. in Ave University you, know, mm -hmm. you, have, you have all your friends to support you yeah. you know we're not in this alone absolutely you know? My friends are role models to me, honestly. Yeah. Thank you so much, Valeria, for joining us on Life on the Rock. Thank you for having me. God bless you. We now turn to Father Mark with Just Ask. Hey, Father Mark. A lot of my friends say they don't need organized religion. What should I tell them? That's a great question. You know, I recently read a survey that said one in five Americans identify as spiritual, but not religious. And I know a number of spiritual people that never go to church that have a real vibrant faith life. They have a real connection with God and it works for them in a powerful way. But religion helps us to order the entirety of our life to God, it helps us to give the right reverence and honor and worship to him, to offer right worship to him. Because I think we have to ask ourselves, how do I know the truth? How do I know if I'm deceiving myself about who God is and what is a good life? Jesus Christ came, second person of the Trinity, came to reveal God to us, who he is, who God is, and his plan of salvation for us. Jesus suffered, died, and rose again for our salvation. He merited for us the grace of redemption. That grace is poured upon us that he won for us in the sacraments. So that revelation comes to us in him of who God is, how we are to act, and we receive that grace to act upon that revelation, to live a good life. All that happens in church. I hear the gospel proclaimed. I have the teachings of the church. I receive the sacraments. I receive grace to be holy. And on top of that, we are not saved as individuals. We are saved, united to one another in Christ, in his mystical body. So I absolutely need to come to church and have the witness of other believers. One, to witness to me a good life, a saintly life, a holy life, to, to be witnessed to uh, by people that are living lives of faith, and also that they can pray for me and I can pray for them. And I have a place to practice charity, especially to live out my faith. So why do we need organized religion? It helps to order the entirety of our life to God, to love him, to serve him, to worship him, to give him the honor and reverence that we owe to him. Thank God for our Catholic faith. Tonight, I loved our Cool to be Catholic film about persevere in the faith. I think it makes a great point about how we are to live our faith, that it takes a human effort. It is a human act. Faith is both a, a gift from God and it's also a human act that we have to act upon this faith. It has to be enlivened by charity, by good works, by prayer, by going to the sacraments, by going to Sunday Mass, by reading the scriptures, by doing good spiritual reading. You know, just living out that faith helps us to grow in our faith. And I think sometimes we miss that in our culture. And our religion, the practice of religion, helps us to do that, helps to lead us to a, a worship and a reverence to God. And I think we saw that tonight in Valeria's uh, witness in, our, in the interview, because she made such a, a great effort, you know, overcoming obstacles in our own life yeah. and growing in our faith on and off the field. It's a great, a great interview. Yeah, she's, she showed us that faith is real, it's tangible, it's animated by charity. And sometimes today we can get distracted. She mentioned this with all the screen time we have. Yeah, she, she mentioned a lot of um, just you know, feeling, feeling isolated, feeling lonely. That's a real danger that we, can, we, all, we all can fall into. So hit us up with the Into the Vineyard Challenge. Our Into week. the Vineyard Challenge this week is to fast from social media for one day. Not because it's intrinsically evil or anything. We can use social media for many good things. Obviously, here at EWTN, we use it for the good. We use it to communicate the gospel. So it can be used for many good things. But it's good for us to take a step back, to take a step back and to just have a break from it. And now we'll send you into the vineyard with a blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Father and the Son, and, and the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. 
Amen. We're going to leave you tonight with a music video by recording artist Teresa Patterson called He Makes All Things New. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. Victory